What is up, my friends? This is uh, Brandon Osborne, AKA Control for Days. Today, what I'm going to be doing is walking you through a league match with uh, Black Green Yawgmoth in Modern, and I'm going to help coach you through the steps uh, that are important in winning the match that we're going to be playing. I don't know what the match is going to be as of yet, uh, but when we get paired, I will I'll walk you through the matchup. Uh, a couple of things before we get started, first and foremost, uh, if you're interested in playing this deck and you want to learn more about how to approach each matchup, uh, check out the sideboard guide that I have in the description below. It not only provides you with the ins and outs of every matchup, but it will also give you uh, key cards and key lines that are relevant to win the matchups. Uh, second thing, uh, this page is new, uh, so if you're watching this video, please hit the subscribe button, uh, give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you liked about today's video, uh, what you think I could do better in the future. Ultimately, I want to make this a channel where you can come to not only get strategy, but to enjoy the content as well. Uh, and lastly, uh, not only do I have a sideboard guide in the description below, but I also have uh, a stat sheet that provides you with the stats in terms of my uh, results in every matchup that I've had up to this point with the deck in terms of not only by deck list, but by uh, matchup as well. So I don't think I said that. Uh, it didn't come off the tongue exactly the way I planned to, but you get the idea. So that link's in the description below. Feel free to access that and check it out. The list we're running today is the list I've had the most success with based upon the results of that spreadsheet that I talked about. Uh, it varies from the prominent lists that are being played right now slightly in that uh, my list is running two Grist in the main, one in the board, as opposed to four in the main. And I'm also running two Endurance in the main, uh, in place of Grist's three and four in the main deck. Uh, this list has produced about a 73% win percentage over over 250 matches. Uh, so it has been performing very, very well. And that is the reason I am sticking with this as opposed to switching over to those other lists. Um, besides that, this is my first league with the uh, card Viseju. Hasn't come up yet, uh, but I am hopeful that it will help to boost matchups just a little bit because I think it's a really powerful card. I want to test two in the main deck, but I was only able to get my hands on one, which is why you're only seeing one today. Uh, but once I have some, uh, some games and matches in with two in the main deck, I'll let you know what I think about that as opposed to one. Uh, Let's go to the league. We are, this will be our third match in this league. Uh, it's only going to be the second match that we've played. Uh, the first match, uh, we had some technical difficulties. Unfortunately, when you're running parallels on a Mac, sometimes you get dis disconnected and you can't get back in. So that is what happened there. We didn't actually play that match. We connected and then got disconnected and that was it. Uh, our second match we played against Death and Taxes, which was an easy 2-0. I started recording it, but it's not really a matchup you see too often, so I didn't think it would be the most valuable thing for you guys to watch uh, right off the bat. So we're going to hopefully get paired against a prominent deck in the format. Hopefully I win, and hopefully I can show you how to go about doing so. So we are looking for an opponent. And while we are waiting... Um, this deck, I think, is one of the most underrated decks in the format. It's really, really strong, and hopefully I can show that to you. We just got paired. Let's jump into our match. All right, so our opponent, I don't know what they're on. Uh, we have won the die roll, and we are going to play first. All right, so... Gladly, we are playing against a Lurus deck, which means this is probably a tier one deck or, or something that is very prominent in the metagame. Against Lurus decks, first and foremost, you see that card across the table from you. You want to be mindful that probably six to seven out of 10 times, they're going to have lightning bolts in their deck. Obviously, the exception is with, with hammer time. But for that reason, uh, I am cautious to keep one land hands that have a lot of mana dorks in those sorts of matchups. Um, so something something to be mindful of. Uh, if you have a one lander with like two or three dorks, it's probably not a keep 
against a Lurus deck, whereas for his other decks, you could keep that hand and do well with it. This hand is, is fine. It's not great, but we will keep it. Uh, this hand lines up better against like a Death Shadow or, um, or like a Black Red Rock deck as opposed to uh, Hammer Time here. So we're going to lead Tomb into Young Wolf. And pass turn. All right, so it's actually burn. Uh, so shocking ourselves on turn one doesn't feel great. Um, I guess this is, could also be the white red land destruction deck, um, but I'm gonna hedge that it's burn right off the bat. So shocking ourselves wasn't ideal against burn, but our hand actually lines up really, really well in that we have both Blood Artists and Scavenging Ooze in our opener. And Endurance against Dragon's Rage. And this is my first time drawing Besage You. I'm trying to think. So if it's Burn, that card is super relevant against Eidolon. So I think I'm gonna hold it in my hand and fetch. And we are going to get a basic forest. And I think the game plan here after an attack is to develop our mana uh, so we can have endurance up next turn or scavenging ooze to eat something. So we're gonna swing. Uh, and not only that, wall root serves as a blocker. Uh, so if they do cast a hasty creature, we can uh, hopefully prevent that damage. So typically burn doesn't run channeler and bobble. All right, so this is the land destruction deck. This is my first time playing against this deck. I haven't had the opportunity to play a ton over the last week or two. So um, yeah, this is a first. So we need to be mindful. They have uh, mana tithe in the deck, so we need to play around that. So important to keep that on our radar. I think here we are probably just going to main phase endurance um, to keep them off of DRC after we swing and to play around mana tithe here. And now I guess the question is as well, I don't know this exact list, but the consideration is, do they have land destruction that would make us want to fetch basics over non-basics? Do they have ghost quarter? Do they have, um, I forget what the card is called, where they sacrifice it to kill, to destroy a non-basic. Um, I think we're gonna fetch Overgrown Tomb again. We're gonna shock again. And I will cast Endurance. We could also shuffle our lands back in, but we have another Endurance in the deck, so I am going to pass on doing that. So drawing a land there was actually really strong. That's kind of what we wanted. Um, you know, just continue to develop our mana base, be able to cast our spells and put some pressure on them uh, as they kind of just sit there and dirtle. The fact we were on the play this game is also really, really relevant, very important. Um, you know, it's being on the play is just better in general. Taking some damage off their lands here. 
I would imagine Wall of Runes is probably really strong in this matchup as well. Uh, so they're taking out our Wolf, which is fine. Actually, don't know what the second half of this card does. Destroy all lands. Dangerous. All right. So, Wolf actually would have been really good with Evolution. Hmm. Not knowing exactly what's in this deck is a little bit of a, a drawback. But this turn, I think what we're going to do is just develop our board further. And play out the Ooze, play out the Artist. And I think we're just going to stay back on defense here. Um, and I'm going to play the artist out first. For if they kill the ooze during my turn, it gives me the opportunity to gain a life and drain them as well. Oh, I forgot about that. I mentioned it earlier and then I just completely forgot about it. Duh. Yeah, so that was a mistake. But we can Evo into Blood, into Yogmoth next turn, assuming. Um, Assuming we have the land to do so. And I'm actually going to attack now that they're tapped out. Get a crack in. They kept a card on top. Let's see if it's relevant. Playing this matchup a little blind, I really don't have an understanding of what's in their deck, so my lines might be a little off here. Okay, so they have Saga in the deck, which is good to know about, which makes sense. here. All right, so we could play around Mana Tithe. Um, but I really don't think I'm going to. I think I think we're going to Evo away the Wall of Roots to get a Yawgmoth. And I think we're just going to try to kill him, basically. Um, actually, I'll keep the Endurance back here, too. Feels like they f 6 Let's see. Yeah, they f 6 All right, so we're in really good position now. I'm going to let them swing into the Endurance. Kill their Channeler. Yeah, so they just scoop from there. Makes sense. Okay, so this deck, they rely on their Graveyard, so we're going to bring in Endurance. Feels like a matchup where Grist would be good. They're playing a bunch of artifacts, so we're going to bring in our artifact package as well. I think we can leave those cards out. Um, once again, I really don't know what they're playing, so this strategy might not be ideal. Uh, I feel like we want our dorks. I feel like we can shave on our undying creatures and our tutors. 
We still have to bring in four more cards or cut four more cards. Hmm. Wall of Roots is really, really strong. I don't know how strong Ooze is. If they put a fast clock on us, it's going to be relevant. I don't know if we want. I think we cut Grist number three. Um, maybe only three endurance as opposed to four. And we'll shave, I think one more Evo. So it feels bad getting that countered with a mana tithe and maybe we'll shave one force of vigor. So we'll try that. I don't know. I think I probably wanted both Force of Vigors, but we'll see. See how this plays out. So being on the draw is not ideal, uh, but we have lands and spells, so I don't think I want a mulligan. I don't know how well this is going to pan out, given the fact we don't have any mana dorks. And we're on the draw, but we'll see. Sentinel, our hand lines up pretty well against that. Uh, that's a really good draw. We're going to play Catacombs to play around land destruction. Targeted land destruction, that is. I don't know if they have any, but... That's what we're doing. I'm assuming they brought in some form of graveyard hate. Deck is interesting. It won a challenge, I think, two weeks ago, week and a half ago. It seems to have been popular since then. I really haven't played it a ton since this deck was conceived, so um, I don't know that much about it. All right, Pithing Needle. So So generally people would name Yawgmoth when they cast a Pithing Needle, um, but given the fact this is a land destruction deck and we have an uncracked fetch land, uh, I am not going to let them shut us off of that for at least a turn. We have Yawgmoth, but uh, I don't want to risk that. So we're not going to. And I'll let them name Yawgmoth. It's not that big a deal at this point in the game. Um, being able to stick a Grist as well is going to be relevant. So the fact they're tapping out is really good. Opens up our wall of roots. Oh, yeah, that's pretty good. It's unfortunate. Having another fetch land is pretty good. More land, the better. If we can get up to two land, that's where we want to be. Sentinel's fine. Given the texture of our hand, these really don't matter that much. I mean, we'll take a couple of hits from them, but they're their inability to, to grow these really um, makes it significantly less scary. So I think I'm gonna get a basic here. Ooh, they could have a mana tithe, which would be unfortunate. All right, so because of mana tithe, I think I'm actually going to lead on Geist uh, and hope that they tithe that, which I'm fine with. And then next turn, I can go wall into Geist if they don't have some form of, of land destruction. But wall is really the most important card that I want to get down. That's fine. All right. Oh, we got 
that double wall. That's really, 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 really good. It's like best case scenario. All right, and now we can cord as well. You can cord for a wolf, Geist next turn, and then Evo into a Yogmoth. Which actually, I don't know if I want to do that. Given their hand right now. Or given their their battlefield. Wow. Wow, that's crazy. All right, so I think they're in pretty big trouble. Um, two, four, six, seven. So we can pay for both Sentinels and still get a Yawgmoth. Um, but what I think I'm actually going to do is probably go for an Endurance. Uh, yeah, that's really bad for them. All right, that changes things a little bit. Maybe, we'll see. I mean, my hand, I, I, I top decked really well here. Pulling three wall of roots is just ridiculous in this matchup. They might just scoop here. Um, all right, so we're going for three. We're going to pay for those. Get an endurance. Hit their graveyard. Lock the channeler. He's dead. That's it. Luris now. Really not a big deal. Uh, yeah. So I think we swing in. Um, So I'm actually going to Evo for a um, scavenging ooze, I think. And again, you get rid of one of our wall of roots. So now they cast Lurus, we can eat the Dragon's Rage. I mean, they're really, I, I don't think they can win from here. Unless they have something like Anger of the Gods, they're just, they're super dead. And they scooped. So I would imagine this is probably a pretty good matchup for us. I don't know if... Oh, they, they have Lurus, so they don't have Fury. You know, we have a ton of, of mana creatures. We can develop their board. 
we can develop our board uh, fairly quickly to negate the effects of their land destruction uh, and play around Manatide. As for Sentinel, inability to grow it, it's really not that scary. Um, we have a ton of artifact destruction in the sideboard. So all in all, I think this is probably a good matchup. Uh, I would have probably brought in my second Force of, uh, force of Vigor. I think that was probably the right move. Uh, so that should be in the deck. And uh, that would be the big thing that I would be doing differently. I'll add this matchup to my sideboard guide, which once again, which once again is in the description below. And uh, hopefully this has kind of provided you guys with a little bit of, of direction in terms of how to go about playing the matchup, cards to play around, uh, and just general strategy with the deck. So thank you guys for joining me for this video. I've enjoyed doing this and I will see you next time. Until then.